Zodiac Arms for a night of effing comedy 11. Where is my delicious effing vodka and Sprite? Oh, there it is. Effing vodka drinks are $3 tonight. I think I hit my quota for effings tonight. No? Effing vodka? One more? Okay. Uh, tonight, I will be your guide on this journey physically, spiritually, emotionally through a vast range of comedians, four to be exact. Um, I am the first white host of A Night of Comedy. My name is Michael Grace. It's very white people. Yeah, give a round of applause for me, white people. Give a round of applause for white people. Um, being the first white host, it's, it's, it's an honor, it's a privilege. Uh, yes, it does put me in the same category as Jackie Robinson and Rosa Parks. Um, any, 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 any white men in the audience at all? White men in the audience, applause. White men. I see one right there, he's not applauding. Okay, I am to you guys what Barack Obama is to like everybody else. Like something significant. A uh, little bit about myself. Um, I, was, I was married. Uh, I met my wife in acting class back in college. Uh, she, was, she was really into strange things in the bedroom. Uh, she, liked to, she liked to role play. And that's normal, that's totally fine. But she wanted to be characters from movies. She wanted to be uh, celebrities, things like that. Which I was okay with. She wanted to be Rose from Titanic, because that was her favorite movie. Uh, so she wanted me to be Jack. She wanted me to draw her naked, which was an awful thing, because I have no artistic talent whatsoever. <laughs> but then one night she asked me, my baby, honey, sweetie, what celebrity do you want to be? So I thought for a second, and uh, the first thing that came to me was Drew Peterson. <laughs> so I'm dating somebody new now. <laughs> she, she's, uh, she's right over here. Wait, wait till the people. You can act like you know me. Yeah, um, we haven't been dating very long, and uh, it, it, it kind of sucks. Um, uh, it, it, it's good, though, because I won't be the primary suspect in her disappearance or murder. Uh, but, on the other hand, I won't be able to take out an insurance policy on her so that I could actually benefit from her disappearance or murder, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I uh, recently moved out of Northwest Indiana. Give an applause for that. Anybody that lives around here. Yeah, there's a few of you that are still around this awful area. Um, uh, so I, I found out that I was going to be hosting this tonight. And so I told my mom, who lives up in Maryville, uh, Mom, I'm going to be hosting this comedy night. And uh, I was like, do you want to come? Do you want to come see me perform? She's never seen me do comedy before. And she said, no. That's okay. And I was like, I was like Mom, why, why don't you want to come? Why, why don't you want to come yeah. see your, your son, your only son, your only child, do something that he loves? She told me that I'm not funny. And that's okay, because clearly from the response tonight, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. Um... Oh, man, these effing vodka drinks for $3 are delicious. <laughs> I'm not a corporate show at all. But how about we get things started? Who wants to see a real comedian? Uh, got some notes on this guy. Didn't get height, weight, anything like that, any fighting stats. But he will be, on Friday the 13th, performing in Aurora for a campfire comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, the sound of two hands coming together is applause. Ladies and gentlemen... Adam! How are we doing tonight, guys? That was pathetic at best. Come on. We are here for a night of comedy. How are we doing tonight, guys? You're on your cell phone and you're like literally two feet away. You are in my living room here. Put that shit away. Is anybody here celebrating anything tonight? My birthday. Your birthday. My birthday's today. Your birthday's today. Oh, give it up for him and his birthday. <laughs> you didn't die for another 365 days, and we're all very proud of you. <laughs> I want to know why you two didn't clap and haven't made zero expressions tonight. <laughs> you, uh, you don't, I don't want it. That's, that makes me want to know more. We're going to have a conversation tonight. How are we doing? There you go. That's a good answer. And answer. So what, what brings you guys out tonight? 
they, they made you. Are they, are they good friends? Or? We'll find out. We'll find out? Very close to the chest you're playing your cards tonight. That's uh, something. All right, who's drinking tonight? Let's, get, let's do that one. Good. I love drinking. Drinking is one of my favorite things to do, and I especially like going to bars. Uh, let me tell you this story. Uh, I was in a bar, I was outside having a cigarette, this woman walks up to me with this bucket full of like, uh, plastic jello shot syringe things, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Some sort of response, come on, give me something. Yeah. Yes, good. Yeah. <laughs> this guy did have no idea what you're talking about, what's a bar? <laughs> what are friends? <laughs> that one, you got sad at him, <laughs> I don't like that one. So I'm at a bar with friends. I'm outside having a cigarette. She walks up to me with this bucket full of plastic jello shot syringe thing. She's like, would you like one? I was like, are they free? She's like, no. I was like, well then walk away. <laughs> She's like, I'll make it naughty for you. I was like, how on earth are you going to do that? She's like, well, I'll put it between my legs. You get down in your knees. Put the end in your mouth. I put some plunger from behind and I'll go into your mouth. I was like, let's think about that for a second. You want me to get down on my knees, put that big alcohol jelly filled strap on in my mouth, and then you want to bust a load in it? <laughs> like, no, thank you. <laughs> About two minutes later, I saw some guy who just goes, like, high five his friend, like, this guy's going to give me right now, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, the only thing that made that gear was his bedazzled affliction shirt. <laughs> Part of me really wanted to see him do one of these, though, just go, <laughs> not swallowing. Sorry. <laughs> Christian values, mama raised me right. Oh, don't worry, I'll get it. There you go. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, I think I'm good now. Alright, cool. I'm right here, guys. This is my living room. Don't disturb me in my living room. Give me my 15 minutes of living room fame. I was very drunk at the same bar, and I saw this girl who had uh, one of those haircuts with the poofy thing up here that girls think is attractive for some reason. And uh, in my drunken intelligence, I walked right up to her, pointed directly at her face, I said, you are the alien from Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know why that guy punched Snooky. He wasn't trying to shut her up, he was trying to save the planet. He's like, welcome to Earth. <laughs> So another guy there, he had his collar popped, and uh, so I ran up to him, I was like, uh, you might want to fix your collar, it's up and you look foolish. And he said, no, it's supposed to be that way. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, I'm not just sure, I'm Jersey sure. <laughs> so I pushed him in front of a bus. Uh, I'm going to open up a little bit. I'm a, I'm a vegetarian, which is not a synonym for gay. <laughs> I said that one time, some guy's like, dude, it kind of is. I was like, you just ordered a hot dog from a place called Five Guys. Let's take it easy. <laughs> I told my mom I was a vegetarian, and she goes, oh, we wanted grandchildren. I was like, not how that works, mom. <laughs> Still straight. Uh, I was uh, out, and I said I was vegetarian, and some guy comes up to me and goes, so, do you eat potatoes? And I was like, yes, but only the free-range potatoes. I don't like when they're kept in that sack all tight up like that. <laughs> These are legitimate questions people ask me. Somebody asked me if I drink beer. I was like, what the fuck do you think is in beer? <laughs> Maybe calm down for a second. Uh, people always ask me if my girlfriend's vegetarian. I'm like, no, she's happy. <laughs> I don't really get the chance to go out many places. I'll tell you this one uh, real quick. Uh, I went to Subway this weekend for their choice vegetarian options, which is pretty much salad on bread. Uh, so I went there, and the guy making my sandwich had an extra thumb. Yeah, it was weird, but I didn't see it right away. Uh, I walk up there, he's like, what would you like? And I was looking up the menu, I was like, I would like, and I, just thought was, I saw his thumb. I'm like, someone else to make my sandwich, because... <laughs> I don't know if that's contagious or not, I just never read mine and I'm okay. <laughs> but I figured, I figured it'd be better suited for other jobs, like better jobs, like a movie critic, movie's really good, get one of those. 
or like uh, a magician, you know, like, aha, I want something like that. <laughs> but part of me really wanted him to try for the $5 footlong commercials. <laughs> Just, all right, let's see what you got. He's like, five? Like, nope, you fuck that one up almost immediately. <laughs> We're going to go with the squirrel over here. <laughs> Do you guys have pot belly out here, the sandwich place? Yeah. yeah? You guys like it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, they're racist. Um, <laughs> seriously, you walk in there, you order your sandwich, like, you want that on wheat or regular? But like, you can't call white regular. <laughs> like, that's not going to fly anywhere else. Like, a school application? Like, are you African American, Hispanic, or regular? <laughs> like, I'm regular. <laughs> oh, I, I do have a girlfriend now, which is nice, so give it up for me. Thank you. Uh, I'm not good at talking to girls, really. Um, I had a gym membership, if you can believe it or not, by looking at this manly physique that's standing before you. Uh, but I was, I saw this girl walking out of the gym, and I was like, she's very attractive, I want to go talk to her. Uh, so I ran up to her, and she had these shape-ups on, so I was like, oh, conversation, you know, I'm like, so I was like, how are those shape-ups working out for you? And her response was, these aren't shape-ups, I have a club foot, asshole. <laughs> To which I responded by trying to save the conversation was, well, they're doing wonders for your ass, so. That's okay, we can end every joke with a song. <laughs> Let's do it that way. You will know when the punchlines are. Uh, yeah, I was having a conversation with another girl, and um, long story short, uh, I thought that, well, hmm, how do I describe this real quick? Uh, she told me that she was Team Edward, uh, but I thought that she said that she was Team N-Word, uh, which either way, not racist and Team Jacob, who's with me? <laughs> Fuck yes! Root for the friend zone, that's right. <laughs> Twilight's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, this guy, clearly. If you were like, no, fuck you, man, I'd be concerned. <laughs> what? <laughs> You'd be vegetarian? <laughs> Talk about the team Edwards in the room, right? <laughs> Oh, but Twilight's uh, dumb, because, uh, like, you couldn't switch the roles, guys, to girls, and have it still be the same. Like, if someone came up to me and asked me the question, Adam, are you Team Christine or Team Sarah? I'd be like, that is a ridiculous question. I am Team both. Like, <laughs> let's take it to the bedroom and get this monster mash started, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I was dating this one girl, and... She had the brilliant idea of bringing me to go see the um, Miss Illinois pageant, which I was kind of excited to see because I wanted to see the talent section, like the talent portion of the show, uh, which I got there and it turns out they canceled it, which I thought that makes sense. You can't expect people to be pretty and talented in the same round. Um, but I was still like having fun, you know? And uh, until they got to the question and answer part, which uh, they asked this girl very vital, like, life-changing information. The question they asked her was, uh, if you could bring one item to a desert island, what would it be? Her answer? Her parents' engagement ring. It's like, oh yeah, that's sentimental, that's great. It's like, but I thought, really, that changed, that trumped, like, a roll of duct tape or a change of clothes or a tent? How about a boat? What's wrong with you? You're not Bear Grylls. Uh, <laughs> Which, by the way, we need to get Bear Grylls on Fear Factor immediately. Because <laughs> I would love to see them put him in a coffin full of snakes and they're like, alright, let's see uh, how he's doing in about half an hour. They walk back like, oh, he's uh, built a fire, a shelter, and eaten half the snakes. Uh, <laughs> just give it to him. <laughs> Another side note, this isn't a joke, I just want to see him in the Hunger Games movie too. <laughs> this guy's with me. <laughs> From behind me on the couch. How we doing, buddy? Keeping it real. Keeping it real. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, 
Um, me and my girlfriend, actually, uh, we live together now. Uh, we sleep on the same bed, and uh, people ask us now, uh, so do you guys have sides on the bed? I was like, uh, it's a twin bed, there are no sides. <laughs> it's like asking someone, hey, you want to share this jelly bean? <laughs> Satisfied? Surprisingly not. <laughs> She's a big fan of the cuddling, but who isn't? Give it up for cuddling if you love it. Oh, fuck all of you. No, every single person in here should be clapping for cuddling. Let's do this again. Who here likes cuddling? Yeah! I like how you clapped, but she didn't. You guys are making my night. Girl, like, you have the easy job, too. All you gotta do is beat a little spoon light out and not fart. Like, you should be happy. <laughs> That is your job. Like, I still don't know what to do when I'm cuddling. I either gotta keep my hand curled up like this. Like I got it stuck in a meat grinder or something. Or I keep my arm out like this until it falls asleep. Suddenly, I'm in a pillowy version of 127 hours. I don't know whether to wake her up or just pee in the jar. But I pee in the jar because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> it's funny if she's here and she's never heard that part before. I'm going to have some explaining to do after the show. Uh, I just graduated school. Give it up for me. Don't clap too hard. It's a philosophy degree. So I'll probably be serving you guys very shortly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did, I did get a degree in philosophy, and um, I'm equivalenting it to a participation degree, or participation trophy in Little League, so uh, I paid a lot of money, but I'm going nowhere, so. <laughs> like, I'm expecting to get my degree in the mail, and there to be a picture of Chuck E. Cheese in the corner. <laughs> I open up the envelope, ten tokens fall out with a note that says, ride that helicopter. <laughs> I had to take special classes to get my degree. I had to take uh, Disappointing Your Parents 101, uh, Wasting Time and Money 303, and then I had to take a seminar called When the Fries Are Done. So <laughs> it's going great for me. Um, my school is weird. Uh, instead of semesters or quarters, they run on trimesters, which kind of makes it sound like pregnancy. Uh, even weirder, they call it dropouts miscarriages. I thought that was strange. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> My school is Methodist, but I didn't know how religious they were up until uh, I walked into the science center and the building was completely empty and there was just a banner on the wall that just said no. <laughs> oh man, my, uh, my advisor pulled me into his office one day and was like, you ever consider studying abroad? I was like, I study abroad every time I go to class. Am I right, buddy? <laughs> some of you guys get that, some of you don't. You'll figure it out on the way home. <laughs> if you don't get that joke, you should just start coloring in your coloring book. <laughs> oh, my school is racist. Um, no surprise there with my uh, Illinois education. But um, I, I figured out when they were racist by uh, walking to the art center and saw, I saw that they had uh, colored pencil sharpeners. And I thought Martin Luther King died for nothing. <laughs> we have so much work left to do. I was walking around during orientation, I saw a black guy wearing a shirt that said property of North Central College. I was like, oh dude. <laughs> because of the slavery. <laughs> but I tried to be a good person and I ran right up to him. I was like, you know, you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> So we didn't make a lot of friends. <laughs> to go along with my school being racist, we have a building there called the White Activity Center. <laughs> it's a real thing. I was like, all right, I get it. You named a guy named White. I understand. But I want to know somebody with a weirder last name trying to get a building named after him. It's like, all right, we got a very large grant from Mr. Uh, Rappé Dungillon. Rappé Dungillon, that's a weird name. Is that French? Rappé Dungillon? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Rappé Dungillon. It's like, no, it's pronounced Rape Dungeon and it's German. <laughs> Name the Children's Center after me. <laughs> All right, I'm Adam Grant. You guys have been a lot of fun. Enjoy the rest of your show.